Are you ready for my Saturday night takeaways then? I actually had a Saturday night takeaway while I was sat watching the rest of the rugby. After I got back from Exeter where I was working for ITV, it has been an absolutely stunning couple of days already in the Champions Cup and I can't wait to do it all over again tomorrow with the final few games of the round. But yes, thank you very much for watching. My name's Tim, this is Egg Chasers and I'm absolutely loving the Champions Cup. Don't get me wrong, as I have said before on previous videos, I do think there's a bit of work to do on the format and making sure you squeeze as much enjoyment out of the pool stages as possible but it is starting to bobble very nicely so i'm going to run you through some of the games that i've seen or caught up with because it's not possible to watch all of them especially when i spent about seven hours traveling up and down the motorway from manchester to exeter but it was uh, the team from manchester who went a little bit further than i did they went down to cape town sail sharks visited the stormers and I wanted to start in South Africa with the Champions Cup because I, I was absolutely, I was, I was delighted for, for the Stormers, delighted for the competition to see, what was it, 26,000 supporters in that stadium. The surface looks really good. It's looking like a cracking place to go and watch a game of rugby, which is why, by the way, um, I've been talking about a visit to South Africa this year. And yes, that is on the cards. I really wanted to come and see the last tour of the traditional tours with Ireland uh, playing South Africa. I thought that would be a cracking couple of games to watch. Neither of those games are in Cape Town, but I'll tell you what is in Cape Town, New Zealand v South Africa in the Rugby Championship a little bit later on. So fingers crossed, hoping to pull off two trips to South Africa. And I want to go to this place and watch a game, I really do. It was great, 31 points to 24. The Stormers got a win against Sale. Fair play to Sale, they rotated quite a lot of players and just had, had a proper crack. But in the end, I mean, surprise, surprise, a South African team, very good at scrummaging. Now, yeah, South Africa and scrums, name a more iconic duo, and it came to the fore for Sale. They got absolutely pumped and yet still managed to stay just about in touch. And I think that it was this game when it made me realise that the young lad, Apoku Fajor, came off the bench and um, got a bit of a lesson in scrummaging from these South Africans. And it was then I thought, you know what? He's a talented kid. Give him a couple of years of premiership rugby just to bed in before we start talking about international rugby. But that guy there, Daimani. Oh, I've got a few questions on Daimani, the number eight for the Stormers. Uh, first question, will Evan Ruse get back as first choice number eight or will he be have, to, have to be shunted elsewhere in the back row if this guy plays like he did uh, in this match? Clear player of the match uh, for this one. Second question on Daimani, is he a springbok bolter? Could he make Rassi Erasmus' squad? Potential too early to say that. He's been looking good every time I've seen him the last few years. He's been looking decent. And I'll tell you what, he's got some wheels. I, I'll have another third question as well for you. Where can I get a pair of his trainers? Cheeky little uh, mention of his own company there. If he plays like that, he could do whatever he wants, I reckon. Uh, I'll tell you who else looked really good. Marnie Leboc and Damien Velemser. They seem to have come back from the World Cup. Funnily enough, world champions, full of confidence. In the case of Marnie Leboc, it's really pleasing to see he's, he's having a much more rounded game. It's almost like he's gone, OK, maybe there's a couple of little boxes I'm not ticking. I'm going to show you and I'm going to go and do them. And he looks like a real complete fly half. It was good to see. Willemser looks great. And um, yeah, I mean, fair play for sale. Although they did get a little bit of help. Farcical tried to get them back within seven. But coming away from Cape Town with a losing bonus point, not a bad effort for their uh, uh, day's work and the trip involved. Uh, elsewhere, go to the Aviva Stadium where it was another bumper crowd. Watched Leinster handily put Stade Francais away to the sword 43 points to seven was it what did we learn from this one uh, we learned that um even though leinster aren't playing anywhere near their best yet even though leinster are making quite a lot of errors and looking a bit disjointed they're still absolutely class which is a little bit of a scary thought for everyone else in the competition when they actually do click which they haven't yet they could be formidable they had some line out issues um but I tell you what, they've got some absolute weapons. Ryan Baird is a freakish athlete. Dan Sheehan is as well, especially in those wide channels. Jordan Lama loves sidestepping everything. Uh, and um, James Ryan, pretty handy off the bench. Gary Ringrose, it was reminded during the, during them, this game, Gary Ringrose has never been on a British and Irish Lions tour. That just seems insane. 
And surely that has to change in Australia 2025. Hope he stays fit and well. But Andy Farrell was there in the crowd watching this one, the newly appointed British and Irish Lions head coach. Um, I'd quite like the format of this competition not to to incentivise teams to send their best possible team because Leinster put Stade Francais to the sword. Some really good tries. Uh, but Stade Francais sent their second team because you, you can pick a B team in this competition, throw your away matches and still qualify with the odd home game. Uh, victory so I do think that is something that needs to be looked at but um, yeah positives from this one um, did I mention Ryan yeah Ryan Baird he really impressed me that Island Six jersey his perhaps we'll see although as we see from the next game Peter Romani came back for a famous Munster victory one they absolutely had to win down in Toulon and it was a fun it had Peter Romani's DNA all over it this one hard nosed Huge defensive effort, bloody-minded, and they got the win. Uh, there was other players in that team that just really stood up. John Hodnett tackled everything in sight. Gavin Coombs' is ball carrying. Craig Casey controlled the game really well. Calvin Nash, with Mac Hansen being out for Ireland, he is really putting his hand up for that Irish right-wing berth. He's, he's going to be in the international squad for the Six Nations when I think it gets announced on Wednesday and he could well be in with a starting spot in that opening game in just a few weeks now against France. And Tom Ahern, while we're there, he is doing everything he can to get himself into that Ireland squad for the Six Nations. What a class try that he scored. And in terms of the Ireland 10 jersey, Jack Crowley had a bit of a wobbly start to this game, but really came through, grew into it and showed massive maturity and was the man of, man of the match in this one. This, this game, and you can see Simon Zebo's face after his try just before half-time, that's what it meant to Munster. This could be a season-shifting, momentum-shifting moment for them. It, it could change the direction of their whole season. A massive win for them down in Toulon with all the injuries and all the troubles uh, that they've been under. They absolutely had to win that one. Uh, and back to the South African victory, a second South African victory in the competition this weekend with the Bulls going to Bristol Bears and winning 17 points to 31, a handy victory. And again, that's another South African side who had total dominance up front. And do you know what? I really like the way Jake White talks about rugby. He is so straight up and honest with what he says. He came out after the game and said, yeah, we absolutely targeted the scrum because we knew that Bristol were without two England props. No Carl Sinclair, no Ellis Genge, although I'm not sure it would have made a difference the way that the Bulls were scrummaging. It went to uncontested scrums at one point, which is such... I mean, it just... I don't know, it just doesn't feel like rugby when there's uncontested scrums, does it? But they were absolutely dominant there. And, um, well, that was one highlight. The, I don't like talking about referees because there's lots the players and coaches can control before we talk about referees. But Matthew Raynal was pretty shocking shocking for both sides just seemed to miss everything it was almost like he didn't have assistant referees and tmos and stuff because there were knock-ons late hits forward passes just wasn't giving any of it felt quite old school really but yeah bristol i mean they got another good crowd Twenty thousand bristol fans turned out with this game and again they got served up something subpar from their perspective that said you have to hand it to the bulls who without a lot of their spring box just put Bristol to the sword and it was scrummaging and then much like the Stormers a willingness to go fast go wide and score some great tries and again Jake White when he was asked about the lack of spring box in his side he said I've just made a note of his quote here he said I want them playing as much as you do I have to rest them it's not fair so clearly a little bit of internal politics going on from the South African um, national team down to um, the sides that are playing in the Champions Cup. And Jake White wants to stack his side with his international players. As it is today, going to Bristol, they didn't need it. A good win for the Bulls. But um, yeah, now let's jump over to, it was in Belfast, wasn't it? Ulster got absolutely pumped by Toulouse. And uh, newsflash, Antoine Dupont, quite good at rugby. He's going to be off to the uh, Olympics in a little bit. Um, and I'm sure, based on what I saw in the game earlier, as well as playing for the French sevens team, he'll be turning out for them in the 100 metres. Maybe in the relay. Give him a spot in the relay. The guy's got... He's just... He's like a cheat code in real life, isn't he? He's an absolute freak. Seven tries for Toulouse. Two tries for Dupont. Two for Malvaca. And my goodness me, what a year. 
well, not just calendar year, obviously, but the World Cup through to now, Piatto Malvaca is playing unbelievably. And it's just not fair, is it? Like Ulster go, oh, yeah, Malvaca's going off. Brilliant. Oh, look, Marchand is coming on. It's unbelievable. I, I reckon, what, what do you think? Hooker might be the strongest position in world rugby when you've got Malvaca and Marchand and Sheehan and Marks and Mbanambi and Taylor. Got some absolute worldies. And oh, Montoya as well. Got some unbelievable hookers in world rugby. And there were a couple of them on show for Toulouse in this one. Uh, Manny Mayafu, he's absolutely going to get picked in France's World Cup squad. 150 kilos of him. Uh, he was outstanding as well. And uh, Thomas Ramos, yeah, he's pretty handy. As for Ulster, not a lot of positives. And a lot of the guys that might be wanting to put themselves in Andy Farrell's island shop window did not have a great evening. Nick Timoney is kind of doing what he can. Uh, other than that, all I can say about Ulster is I, I, I really like their, their yellow European kit, which they've had for a couple of years now. I, I quite like that. Struggling to come up with any more positives. Um, uh, yeah, keep going, Ulster. Uh, next one then, Exeter. This is the game I was at. I was working for ITV and it was 19 points to 17 to Exeter. A bizarre and unusual end to the game. But before I get there, I just want to mention that guy, Henry Slade, who again scored the winning points with a touchline conversion. Again, uh, he, he got the winning points in that game down in Toulon. He's just been absolutely heroic. And you want someone to react in the right way when they get a knockback. He was devastated not to make England's Rugby World Cup squad. And you, you can't understand how a guy of this talent, I couldn't, on this channel, you'll see the videos were there, can, couldn't understand why a guy of this talent wasn't, was overlooked by Steve Borthwick for the World Cup. He has just reacted in absolutely the model professional way by focusing on his club game, being a leader, and doing everything he can on the field. And he is just dragging Exeter Chiefs through some performances. They're showing so much resilience with a really young team. And they were up against it. They were not the best team in this one. Glasgow, that was there to win for them. And they, they will be absolutely gutted. The way the game ended, you may, I don't know if you've seen the footage, but um, Exeter had a scrum on their own line. All they had to do was win the scrum, kick the ball out, game over. Number eight goes to kick it. Manages to get scragged by the scrum half and the flanker for Glasgow, uh, Fagerson and Horn, and then flanker manages to pick it up and score. Glasgow, wild celebrations, think they've won the game, but the flankers were broke, um, lost their bind before the ball was out. If it was in open play, if it was not for the, the final play of the match, I don't think that would get checked. There we go. Uh, that was it for Exeter. They managed to get the win. Fantastic atmosphere down there. And I just I just love what Rob Baxter is managing to do with this very, very young team. So um, fair play, Exeter. Glasgow will be gutted. They've got a big one against Toulon uh, next weekend on Friday night. Uh, to Cardiff. Uh, this was another packed house. 12,000 people turned out in Cardiff to watch them against Quinns. And it was looking like it was going their way. 15 points to 7 up. It finished 15 points to 54, so what's that? Um, 41, quick maths, 41 unanswered points conceded by Cardiff, which I think doesn't do them justice for their efforts. Uh, but it just tells you what Quinns are about. They have got explosive pace, creativity. They've got all of the ingredients just to be able to, well, to be able to score 41 points like that in a Champions Cup game. And with Marcus Smith at the helm. Although I just, I've got to mention a couple of other people in that Quinns team who are so impressive. Danny Kerr, man of the match. I get that. My personal man of the match from what I saw would have been Will Evans. Who, again, is he a guy that's going to get overlooked by England because he's seen as too small? If you just look at his performances on the pitch, the guy is absolutely outstanding. And has to be in with a shout. He's playing superb rugby is Will Evans. And the other one, with all the injuries at loose head prop for England, Finn Baxter. He's got to be a dark horse for Steve Borthwick's England squad on Wednesday. We will see about that. A really good win for Quinns. Uh, and Northampton, this is back to Friday night. And an absolute demolition against Bayon. Really abject performance from Bayon, really, which uh, means it was a bit disappointing. If I'm honest, I kind of stopped watching properly 
at half time because the game was pretty much done. But it was great to see that man, Tom Pearson, putting in the kinds of performances he did with London Irish last season, putting his hand up for England selection. And with Courtney Laws, his club teammate, who played another blinder for Northampton, not available anymore. There's a spot in the back row with Tom Curry injured as well. And Tom Pearson is stepping up at just the right time. Saints are just carving it up at the minute, playing some awesome rugby. And um, yeah, you look at the players that are really putting their hand up for international selection. Alex Mitchell, obviously already England's nine. Tommy Freeman, George Furbank, Alex Coles. I expect to see all of them in the England squad for the Six Nations coming up. They are having a great time of it. And it was a fantastic weekend of rugby. Let me know what you thought on any of those games. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your support on the channel. Um, there's more top games coming on the Sunday, obviously. Uh, tomorrow as I record this, maybe today as you're watching it. But um, yeah, if you value club rugby being on the channel just as much as international rugby, and there's a lot of that coming with the Six Nations as well, then give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.